I'm uh, delighted to present Aideen Dowling, who is a first year trainee in the Corporate Finance and Recovery Department in Limerick. She recently placed 25th at the ICF Kayaking Freestyle World Championships in Columbus, Georgia, and was most recently awarded Female Freestyle Kayaker of the Year by Canoeing Ireland for her performance in the discipline throughout the year. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to speak with Aideen. Aideen, thanks for joining us. Thanks, yeah, delighted to be here. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Would you like to start off by sort of sharing a bit of the journey of how you got into kayaking in the first place? Yeah, so I actually started kayaking four years ago now. I um, was a complete beginner, didn't know anything, and I started kayaking when I went to university. So I joined um, the kayak club. I, I did a bit of rowing back home um in Tralee and then when I came to Limerick I kind of planned that I might take it back up but then the kayak club looked way more interesting like the look of like hiking down waterfalls and stuff so I decided to um <coughs> join that but um <laughs> I went to the pool sessions because they run a few training sessions at the pool and uh, very quickly found out that it would be a lot of work um oh, yeah. to get good <laughs> but um no I found it so much fun um, it was a good break from my lectures, um, yeah. kayaking, and then um, I suppose once COVID hit and we didn't really have anywhere to go, we had an area of like flat water. We would say like flat water is water that doesn't move, and then white water would be one that goes down a gradient and makes rapids. But we had some flat water um, in our area, so myself and a couple of my friends decided that we would try and learn freestyle kayaking. Oh, yeah. which is where you would do tricks on the water and that's kind of nice. how I ended up being a freestyle kayaker. Okay, yeah. cool. <clears throat> Got to say, four years in a sport, <laughs> learning it from scratch and then being one of the best in the world at it. <laughs> That's not normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of got a bit addicted to it. I was, because um, I was just really, really um, interested in learning tricks because I thought it looked really cool. So I'd spend ages out during COVID because there wasn't really anything else to do, just um, looking at videos and trying to learn it. And then as soon as the restrictions lifted, I decided to try the freestyle on Whitewater. Yeah. And yeah, with the help of a lot of other freestylers in Ireland, yeah, that kind of is what got me to where I was. Yeah. Yes, there's a quite a few different disciplines within kayaking. Yeah. Would you share a few of them um, and where sort of freestyle kayaking fits in? Yeah, so I mentioned that there was flat water kayaking yeah. and white water kayaking. So within flat water and white water, you would have disciplines. Um, so on flat water, you'd have like sea kayaking, which would just be um, kind of your recreational um, type of kayaking. You just go out in the sea um, with a couple of friends might go on a 30 kilometer kayak but that's not competitive and <clears throat> then you would have like long distance on flat water and that would be like your olympic marathon yeah. um, your olympic sprints so those are competitive and then on white water as i said it's kind of making rapids you can do anything from like little tiny rapids to huge waterfalls in Chile. There's some crazy videos of people doing mad stuff, but you have to send me a couple. <laughs> yeah, I definitely will. Okay. <laughs> Dane Jackson's the one to look at. Dane Jackson, but, um, got it. Yeah. Yeah. No, the, uh, whitewater kayaking. There's a couple of different types, um, but yeah, the main thing is just going out and going down a river from point A to point B. Whereas freestyle kayaking then would be you're on one feature of the river for whitewater freestyle, one whitewater feature, and you're using the force of the water to do tricks. So the water kind of flows over a gradient and recirculates yeah. back on itself. Oh, okay, so you kind of stay in the same yes. spot. Yes, oh, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And you're like using the force of um, the water, I suppose, but you can also do it on flat water, um, which is kind of cool, I think. Do you have yeah. a favorite trick? Um, the loop is definitely my favourite trick. So it's What's just a that? front flip <laughs> a in front your flip kayak. In yeah. your kayak. It's so much fun. Yeah. On white water, you just plug the nose of your boat into the water and then look up and it shoots you around. Okay. So yeah. you end up back on top of the yeah. water. Cool. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> um, so again, well, congratulations on your performance last year at the Worlds. Would you tell us a little bit about the experience and then how what was involved in your preparations? Yeah. So it was so so much fun um i was over in columbus georgia yes in october um i was there for two and a half weeks um kayaking with the best people in the world it was an amazing experience yeah. um 
and in warm water as well, which we're not used to in Ireland. Um, but my training up to it, I went to Canada for the summer before I started my training contract to train over there. Um, they have some pretty good waves in Canada that would be very similar to the one that we were on in Columbus. Um, I didn't go to Columbus because I thought it'd be really busy yeah. that everyone would go there to train, but it turned out that it wasn't actually as busy I, as I expected. And a lot of people ended up in Canada, but it was good in Canada too because you had loads of people to help you. Yeah. Um, but I was in the Ottawa River um, on waves. There. They have <laughs> funny names. There's one of them that's called Bus Eater. Bus because eater. it's so big that... It, it would could, eat a bus. It would eat a bus. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <goodness. laughs> and, yeah. There's another one called Garburator, and that's probably my favourite wave over there. But outside of that, then in Ireland, we have a really good wave in Limerick City yeah. called um, the Gower Wave. Um, it is tidal, and it is dependent on rain as well, and the release from a weir that's upstream, um, or dam. But... Um, that one's not always in in the summer, but we actually got super lucky that when I com- came back from Canada, it actually was in a good bit. So the Irish freestyle kayakers would train a lot on the Gower Wave yeah, and on flat water as well, just building up your um, strength there. Yeah. yeah. So if there's not, if the, if it's not pumping, I don't know if that's the right <laughs> term to use, but if it's not pumping, is it just, how do you navigate that with, um, do you just... Are you training on flat water? Are you in the gym? Because obviously, like, training doesn't stop if the, I suppose, the rapids aren't flowing. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, it is a lot of flat water. I personally do a lot of flat water training. I don't do as much gym as I should do, but... (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) um, Yeah. Um, But, yeah, I do a lot of flat water training, just pretending that I'm on the feature and kind of visualising the tricks in my head and what I would do. Um, oh, very nice. Yeah. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Thanks. So I understand you're a, you're a corporate finance and recovery trainee down in our Limerick office. Yeah. I'm curious, what was it that had you, or why did you join BDO for your graduate program? So I actually used to work in a, as a kayak instructor out in the UL Adventure Centre oh, as yeah. a part-time job in college. Yeah. And when I was there, BDO in Limerick decided to come there on their sports day oh, as a sports okay. and social event. So yeah. I didn't really know much about BDO before it. I had barely thought about grad programs, but they came and they turned out to be like super fun, like probably the most fun we had group that we had that year. Um, <laughs> yep, sounds <laughs> so, about right. Yeah, and I remember um, I was I had a group of them and. Yep. Dermot Hendrick, he's an yep. audit partner. Yeah. He was in my group and he was like, oh, would you like think about applying to a BDO grad program? And I was like, yeah, you yeah. guys seem fun. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was mainly the atmosphere there. I was like, yeah, this will be good. Yeah. yeah. I'll enjoy it. Yeah. There's definitely something different in the way we do things here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so what is your work like, work life like now down in Limerick? Is it chat I know you understand at the moment you're studying for your exams yeah your accountancy exams working and also training as well how do you navigate that it's really busy <laughs> yeah <laughs> super busy um but yeah so as you said I'm studying for the accounting exams I'm doing my cap ones um so yeah working in the office most days and then I go home try to do a bit of study but I also train after work in the evening so yeah. I'm very lucky because I live right beside the lake so even though it's dark there's a lot of lighting and I bring out my own light to go out training out there um but, but everyone in the office is also super supportive like they allow me to have the freedom kind of to train and yeah. um well I suppose you, your, ex- your experience at UL probably preceded that but are you surprised yeah. about the level of support you're getting? Yeah, I was really surprised because I found out that I'd made the Irish team for the US World Championships before I started my training contract. So I was a little bit worried that when I was like, oh, I'm going to need a bit of time off right at the start that they would be not very accommodating, which would be fair enough because I just started. But like, they were so accommodating, so supportive. And that just kind of made the whole thing so much easier and so much like there was so much less stress yeah because yeah it may no like even if it's a solo sport it's not a solo sport no no definitely not and all like they're they're all behind me in the corporate finance like yeah. they were watching the <laughs> the yeah. kayak world championships oh, nice. and i was in it yeah, yeah. oh very cool yeah 
Yeah, no, it makes such a difference when you've got support, um, even outside of the, su- the sport itself. Yeah. Because um, I've seen the difference, you know, myself and just when you have that and when you don't. I remember I made a, I made a world championships team one time and I, the, the guy goes, oh, well, the, the, the company I was working for was like, all right, well, I guess you don't need this job anymore. And they oh, fight. no. <laughs> so, yes, Thankfully this is they didn't very, do that. Yeah. No, very different to that experience, <laughs> yeah. obviously. So not every company has that, I suppose. That's a very extreme yeah. example. <laughs> um, but it's nice to see that I think very much in BDO, uh, and I get your thoughts on this as well, it's not just about work, it's about work life. Yeah and uh, making sure that's in balance. But it's interesting because I think when you have that imbalance, you end up performing better at work anyway. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, because there's a better atmosphere. You you like it more because... Yeah. Better quality work comes from a better quality environment. Exactly. (laughs) So then um, I suppose what's looking forward into the future? What's on your horizon? What's next on, on your goals list so there's an irish team selection coming up again so it's a ranking competition mm-hmm. and the, basically the top five would be offered spots on the irish team for the year going forward yeah. so that competition is in february yeah so i'm training hard for that at the moment to try and get a spot again and then hopefully i'll be attending the world cups in may in germany and then the european championships are on in austria in august so it's a busy yeah. schedule. It is Even busy. just a competition schedule. Yeah. And then is Worlds on again this year or is it no next no, year? No, it's a World Cups this year. Oh, okay. And then next year it's a World Championships. So a World Cups is an open competition. Mm-hmm. And then the European Championships will be a closed competition. So So there's a, is there a qualifying process that you go through for Europeans? And for Worlds? Europeans, you have to qualify onto your country's team. Oh, yes. But for World Cups, you don't. Okay, yeah. so just anyone can go. Exactly, anyone can go. I won't yeah. say that I'm enjoying <laughs> it. Good to know. Oh, that's yeah. exciting. So also, I suppose, we've got one more question for yeah. you. And it's just, uh, I know for early stage careers, there's a lot to navigate. There's a lot of new things that you're learning. And then on top of that, you're also still studying and you're performing at elite level internationally. How, do you have any advice for anyone else who's early stage career on how to navigate multiple commitments um, and, you know, and maintain some kind of sanity or balance <laughs> yeah. with their lives? I guess just have your goals and figure out what it is you want and figure out what your priorities are yeah and then make a timetable around that but also I don't be super strict with myself with it because I know that it's super busy so let yourself have time to relax as well and yeah that but yeah yeah pick your goals and just work for them pick your goals know what you want yeah set your priorities and plan yeah Really good. Thank you so much. Thank you, Aideen, no for your worries. time. Really appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>